Hello and welcome to another episode of Analog Insights. In today's episode, my friend Jules and I will review the Fuji GF670, which is a highly advanced medium format foldable rangefinder camera that was sold until 2014, so a relatively new and recent analog camera. If it looks familiar, it's because it um, is also sold as the Vogtländer Besser 3 in black, and I will talk more about the different versions of the camera in a minute. The camera came to us because of one of the viewers of this channel who lives in Innsbruck, Austria and was kind enough to reach out to us and suggest to review it and he even lent us this camera for a couple of months in order to produce this review. So we took it out on several different photo walks um, and you will see um, images from these photo walks throughout the video but most importantly we also filmed each other during uh, a photo walk at the rowing regatta here in Munich, which was set up for the Summer Olympics in 1972 and is still used until today as a training ground and also event site for certain things. And we went out there on a Sunday photo walk, which was really, really nice. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at the camera, its features and our findings. The camera is considered one of the best medium format rangefinders ever produced. It comes in three different versions, the Folklander Besser 3 in black, the Fuji GF 670 in black for only the Japanese market and the version you can see here which is the same camera, the GF 670 in silver but produced for international markets. Taking a closer look at it, you realize all the cameras were produced in the very same Cosina factory in Japan and are exactly the same except for the labels. Um, the camera is a foldable medium format camera in the tradition of the Folklander Besser II, for instance, um, from the 1950s. And yet it was only sold or hit the market in 2008 and was then sold until 2014 for rather high prices. So this was a premium camera and according to my research, um, the Folkland Abessa 3 cost around 2,300 euro initially, uh, US dollars initially, and the um, Fuji version was around 400 um, US dollars less. Um, the camera, as the name kind of indicates, shoots um, medium format um, film with a six by seven um, ratio, so 120 or 220 film rolls. Um, but uh, what is really nice, uh, you can also uh, use a selector inside the camera to switch it to the 6x6 square image, image ratio and basically shoot this here as well. Um, and obviously you get 10 frames um, for, with a 6x7 image ratio and 12 frames shooting 6x6. Um, the camera only weighs one kilogram, which is really light and it's also rather small in terms of size. We will talk more about that in a minute. And that makes it um, more compact and also significantly lighter than its competition. Um, for instance, the Problem Machina 67, which is also a highly regarded medium format rangefinder, but in comparison, it feels really clunky and big. So if you're in the market for this camera, take a closer look for, or for medium format rangefinders in general, take a closer look at this camera. Thank you. 
about the features of this camera. It comes with a built-in light meter in both an aperture priority automatic mode and a fully manual mode. And you can set the shutter speed using the dial here on the top and it ranges from 4 seconds all the way up to 1 500th of a second plus a bulb mode. Interestingly, you have a leaf shutter, which is not just incredibly silent. I've never heard any shutter that is as silent as this one, but it also means as it is a leaf shutter that it flash syncs all the way up to 1 500th of a second. So if you are prone to shooting flash, this is really, really nice. Um, um, the LEDs inside the viewfinder also always show you the currently selected um, shutter speed or the one that it would suggest um, when you shoot in the automatic mode. And it would also let you know in case of overexposure if you're in the aperture priority mode and would tend to overexpose your image. Um, speaking of the viewfinder, it is a wonderfully and just wonderfully designed and bright viewfinder. Um, you have really nice and bright frame lines that can be easily seen even um, in a backlit situation. Uh, it is really a joy to use and it has a magnification of um, just 0.70 times. Um, but it, what is really great is that the find not only corrects for parallax situations, um, but also um, it adjusts the frame size um, based on the focusing distance that you have set. And once it changes, it all adapts automatically for parallax um, compensation and that. So really advanced and nice. And here it could really feel that this is a rather new and recent camera. The ISO can be set by lifting um, the shutter speed dial and then um, turning it and selecting either um, 25 or all the way up to 3200. So this is really nice. And um, of course, it will naturally communicate with a built-in light meter. Um, the camera comes with a built-in 80mm f3.5 Fujinon lens that is simply outstanding in terms of optical performance and as is kind of common for these Fuji lenses, incredibly sharp. So once you look at the negatives, you immediately see, okay, this is outstanding sharpness and even when shot wide open at f3.5. Um, it comes with bellows focusing, um, which is um, of course common for these kinds of foldable cameras because they make that folding it and making it, reducing it to such a compact size only possible in the first place. But it also means, um, usually a bellows means that you have a rather close focusing distances, but here you're limited to a minimum focusing distance of one uh, of 0.9 meters, which is a bit limiting in my opinion. And we will talk more about that in a minute. Um, advancing the film works not with a typical lever, but instead with a so-called roller wheel, which is kind of interesting and takes some getting used to it. But once you do, it's really, really nice and you just advance it um, and then it stops and lets you know, okay, you've advanced the film enough and you're now at the next frame and it just works really nice. Um, you also have a beautiful film counter window, in my opinion, which personally reminded me of my Leica M6. So I had to kind of put them side by side here. And you can see it's basically very similar. You have beautiful um, numbers in there, beautiful typography, easy to read, um, and overall just a high quality premium feel to it. In order to close the camera, you first need to um, focus to infinity and then also remove all the filters in order to ensure that it closes properly. So what are our personal impressions? Um, to be honest, the camera is incredibly small and I personally expected something much bigger for a 6x7 medium format camera, especially if you compare it to my Mamiya RZ67 or as mentioned before, also the Plobble Machina 6.7. So um, for me, it more feels like a 
larger version of a 35 millimeter Leica M um, and instead of really a medium format camera that actually produces 6x7 negative just like, just like my Mamiya RZ67. So I was really surprised by that. Another thing that really struck me is the outstanding build quality. You can really feel all the experience and uh, yeah, kind of manufacturing expertise that went into the creation of this camera. So um, it, everything feels solid and nicely done. And I can also see this camera kind of age well. Um, what surprised me most is the quiet shutter sound um, and I could personally imagine myself using it during a classical concert for instance and just slowly walking around and taking shots and not disturbing anybody or be, being part of a, of a practice for a, a, during a, a music recording session or something like that and then taking shots um, in the background and not really disturbing people. So this, this was really surprising to me that it could I couldn't imagine a shutter sound that is even more quiet than the Leica M and here this was really surprising, this kind of leaf shutter. Um, in my opinion it is ideal for street photography um, and documentary style photography but I wouldn't want to use it that much for um, shooting portraits. Um, most importantly because of the 0.9 meters minimum focusing distance that I found limiting and also because of of course focusing with the rangefinder is always tricky but once you go in the medium format direction and try to shoot wide open or almost wide open it, it is really hard to focus um, correctly and be spot on here for portraits if, especially if you have a subject that would potentially move a little bit back and forth. Um, what I personally liked um, is um, the built-in lens and the quality you get out of it especially or even when shot wide open at f 3.5 you get incredible results extremely sharp um, down into every corner of the frame really great lens and i can highly recommend taking a look at it the only thing that leaves me slightly concerned is the bellows um, um, because of course now the camera is new and most of the bellows that you will see are perfectly fine in terms of their condition but if you think about it, it only needs some kind of uh, small fracture or punctuation or something in that bellows in order to instantly create light leaks. And that is a common problem with bellows and they usually need or uh, require additional um, services just because you have a camera with a bellows. So this is something that I would really look look for if I would be in the market for such a camera to take a closer look at the bellows and their condition in order to make sure that it is um, solid and I would also kind of anticipate or expect to invest in some kind of service in the course of the lifetime of this camera um, especially for the bellows but if you're fine with that then um, it's a really outstanding camera in my opinion. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Analog Insights and our review of the Fuji GF670 um, or um, also called Vogelinda Vesa 3 as the black version. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it and maybe even share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Jules, Greg and I really appreciate each and every subscriber coming our way. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.